Good morning and welcome to All Saints Church in Little Somborne, just outside Winchester in Hampshire. Uh, today I'm here to see someone who didn't fight in the First World War, but he did provide some of the equipment to fight with. And that of course is Thomas Sopwith. <laughs> Yeah, Thomas Sopwith, he was an airplane designer, had a factory to build um, World War I aircraft like the Sopwith Pup and the Sopwith Camel, obviously got his name. Now I can't really do a lot of filming in the churchyard here because there isn't really much of a churchyard to film. So what I'll do is while I tell you a little bit about him, I'll just have a little wander down the road here and film, at the end I'll film what little bit of churchyard there is. So I'm going to spin you around while I tell you a little bit about Thomas Sopwith. Sir Thomas Octave Murdoch Sopwith was born in Kensington, London on the 18th of January 1888. He was the eighth child and only son of Thomas Sopwith and his wife Lydia Gertrude Messeter. He was a grandson of mining engineer Thomas Sopwith. He was educated at Cottesmore School in Hove and at Seafield Park Engineering College in Hillhead. On 30th of July 1898, when he was 10 years old and on a family holiday at the Isle of Lismore near Oban in Scotland, a gun lying across young Thomas's knee went off, killing his father. This accident haunted Sopwith for the rest of his life. Sopwith was interested in motorcycles and he took part in the 100 mile tricar trial in 1904, where he was one of four medal winners. He also tried ballooning, his first ascent being in C.S. Rolls's balloon in June 1906. Together with Phil Padden, he bought his own balloon from Short Brothers. He was also a member of the Great Britain and National Ice Hockey team that won the gold medal at the first European Championships in 1910. Sobwith became interested in flying after seeing John Moyson flying the first cross-channel passenger flight. His first flight was with the Gustave Blondeau in a Farman at Brooklands. He soon taught himself to fly on a Howard Wright Avis monoplane and took to the air on his own for the first time on the 22nd of October 1910. He crashed after travelling about 300 yards but soon improved and on 22nd of November was awarded Royal Aero Club Aviation Certificate No. 31 flying a Howard Wright 1910 biplane. On 18th of December 1910, Sopwith won the £4,000 Baron de Forest Prize for the longest flight from England to the continent in a British-built aeroplane flying 169 miles in 3 hours and 40 minutes. He used the winnings to set up the Sopwith School of Flying at Brooklands. In June 1912, Sopwith, along with Fred Sigrist and others, set up the Sopwith Aviation Company initially at Brooklands. On 24th of October 1912, using a Wright Model B completely rebuilt by Sopwith and fitted with an ABC 40 horsepower engine, Harry Hawker took the British Michelin Endurance Prize with a flight of 8 hours and 23 minutes. Sopwith Aviation got its first military aircraft order in November 1912 and in December moved to larger premises in Canbury Park Road, Kingston upon Thames. The company produced more than 18,000 World War I aircraft for the Allied forces, including 5,747 of the Sopwith Camel single-seat fighter. Sopwith was awarded to CBE in 1918. Bankrupted after the war by punitive anti-profiteering taxes and a failed venture into motorcycle manufacturing, he re-entered the aviation business in 1920 with a new firm named after his chief engineer and test pilot, Harry Hawker. Sopwith became chairman of the new firm Hawker Aircraft. He became a Knight Bachelor in 1953. After the nationalisation in 1977 of the aviation interests of what was by then Hawker Sidley, he continued to work as a consultant to the company until 1980. In 1979, Sopwith was inducted into the International Air and Space Hall of Fame at the San Diego Air and Space Museum. He was a member of the Air Squadron Flying Club. Sopwith challenged the America's Cup with his J-Class yachts Endeavour in 1934 and with Endeavour II in 1937. In 1937, Sopwith received a yacht Philante, built for him by Camper and Nicholsons. In the Second World War, the ship was requisitioned by the Royal Navy and used as a convoy escort vessel, HMS Philante. After the war, the vessel was returned to Sopwith and he sold her to Norway in 1947 to become the Royal Yacht of the King of Norway. 
Sopwith married Beatrice Hort Ruthven in 1914, but they had no children. After Beatrice's death, he married Phyllis Brodie Gordon in 1932. Their son, Thomas Edward Brodie Sopwith, had, be, had success in car racing. Sopwith's house in Mayfair at number 46 Green Street, where he lived from 1934 until 1940, has a blue plaque. In 1940, he moved to Warfield Hall in Berkshire, which he had acquired the previous year. Sopwith's 100th birthday was marked by a flypast of military aircraft over his home, Compton Manor in King's Sombourne, Hampshire. He died in Hampshire on the 27th of January 1989, nine days after his 101st birthday. His grave and that of his second wife Phyllis Brodie are in the churchyard of All Saints Church, Little Sombourne, near Winchester, which is where we are today. Right, well that's all the information I could get on Thomas Sopwith. But his final resting place is just here to my left. So I'll spin you around and we'll go and have a look at it together. All right, here we go. It's just up here in front of me. Very tiny little church, more like a chapel. Anyway. Thomas Octave Murdoch Sopwith, pioneer aviator, 1888 to 1989. Right next to him, is his second wife, Phyllis Brodie Sopwith, 1892 to 1978. That is the final resting place of Thomas Octave Murdoch Sopwith, pioneer aviator. Well, there you go, it's a little bit different this morning. But um, this chapel, it's more like a chapel, a church, you know, the cemetery here or the graveyard is so small. There's probably only about 25 graves in total. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it anyway. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, maybe consider subscribing, get more content. And if you do subscribe, don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you will be notified every time I upload a new video. So that's it from Little Sombourne in Hampshire. I'll see you on the next one, wherever I am. So bye-bye for now.